video we are going to look at random number generation. We are going to generate values from a uniform distribution but you can of course generate values from many other distributions as well. So we are going to use a uniform distribution which starts at 120 and ends at 152. So to generate our samples we need to go to data, data analysis and choose the random number generation tool. Now the first box asks for the number of variables. This will basically be the number of columns in which we want to generate values. So we're going to start with a sample of size 50. So I want one column with 50 values in it. We're going to generate from uniform. You can see our options here are uniform, normal, Bernoulli, binomial, Poisson, flattened and discrete. So we might work with other variables later on. We're going to stick with uniform for now. Then we just need to specify from where to where we want to generate the values. And Excel can also work from a seed value. Now what a seed value does is it makes sure that when we repeat this using the same seed value, we will get exactly the same results. So we are going to use a seed value of 1, 2, 3. Now our output range just indicates where we want to place our values. So I'm going to place those values in cell A2. So it's going to start in A2. When I press OK, it generates a sample of 50 values. And you will see that they are all between 120 and 152. So we're going to repeat this process and generate larger samples. So we're going to generate a sample of 100. I'm going to place that in B2. And then we will generate a sample of a thousand, which we'll place in column C. And we will finally do a sample of 10,000, which we will place in column D. Now what you'll notice here as well is all of the values in the beginning are the same. So this is because we are using the same seed value. So basically where it stopped here with the first sample, it's going to carry on and give us more values for the next sample and so on. But all the samples, the first 50 values are exactly the same. So now that we have our samples, you can go and look um, at measures of location and spread and compare that to the population. So let's go first work out what our population mean and variance would be. Now we know if we have a uniform variable, we can calculate the expected value as the minimum value plus the maximum divided by 2. That gives us 136 and the variance is going to be the maximum value minus the minimum value divide, square that and divide by 12. So that is 85.3 repeating. So those are the, uh, the parameters for the uniform distribution. That's the um, population mean and the population variance. So we can now go and look at these different samples that we've generated. We should see each of these as a sample from this population. So we know what the population looks like. We want to compare what the sample looks like to the population. So first thing I want to calculate is my average. And we do that using the average function. So I'm just going to calculate the average for the uh, for this sample. And we can see it's not that different from the population mean. But let's just go and look at this in terms of absolute values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sample mean, subtract the population mean, and just look at that in absolute terms. So the reason we're doing an absolute value is that we don't care if the sample mean is larger or smaller than the population mean. We just care about how far from the population mean that is. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the sample variance. So we're going to use the variance.s function since we are dealing with sample data. And again, we can go and look at and see how far the sample variance is 
from the population variance. And we can see there's a bit of a difference here. Now, we might be interested in seeing how the sample um, mean and variance differs from the population mean if we increase our sample size. So I'm just going to highlight all of these formulas and drag them across. We can see that my formulas have copied correctly except for these because I forgot to lock onto those values I was subtracting. So let's go and fix that. So we are just putting absolute references in here. I'm doing that by pressing F4 on my keyboard when I've clicked on the reference. And now if we drag this across, we can see that it is now referencing the correct values. Now, if we look at the difference between the sample mean and the population mean, we can see as our sample size is increasing, our sample mean seems to have gotten closer to the population mean, and the same thing happened with our variance. So we can see here with the sample of a thousand that the sample mean was actually a little bit further away from the population mean, but that's just because we are sampling. So a different sample of a thousand could lead to um, a mean that is closer to the population mean, the sample mean. Um, but that is a property of sampling so we never expect the pattern to be perfect all the time we do expect this variability